reps and both struggled. But this morning, head coach Mike Pettin, uh said Hoyer is a better leader. Quote, he was the clear leader from the beginning. We've maintained all along that if it was close, I would prefer to go with a more experienced player. Brian has done a great job in the meeting, in the meeting rooms, and with his teammates on the practice field and in the locker room. The decision was made last night after meeting with offensive coordinator Kyle Shanahan and quarterbacks coach Dow Loggins. Uh, coach Petten informed the players this morning. The question, quite simply, is it the right decision? Stephen it is the right decision. It's the right decision, Skip Bayless, because of a multitude of reasons. Number one, um, the experience, the veteran leadership, the absence of quality parts you have around him all uh, factor into the equation. To take a young quarterback and throw him to the Wolves uh, like Johnny Manziel would have been thrown to the Wolves, I think would have been much uh, to the to the to the non-benefit of the Cleveland Browns. Uh, ben Tate, we'll see what he does along with West in your backfield, but there's still question marks. Miles Austin, Nate Burleson, still question marks at the wideout. Jordan Cameron obviously is a stud, and we know what he can do. Uh, they've got a couple of high-priced dudes in the, on the offensive line assigned to protect the quarterback, but you essentially don't have a lot of weapons. Josh Gordon, uh, there's an imminent suspension that's coming. We all know that, so he's not going to be available to you, which is why I mentioned Miles Austin and Nate Burleson. So if you don't have the requisite rep weapons necessary in order to feed, uh, to, to really, really supplement your quarterback, and you don't have a stout running game, because remember, they ranked 27th in rushing last season, then again, I was opposed to throwing Johnny Manziel to the Wolves. But I want to emphasize that Johnny Manziel did not lose the starting quarterback job for the Cleveland Browns, and it's not because he never had it. He, he didn't get the job because he lost out on professionalism. It's that simple. When you hear Mike Pettin and those guys talk about a practice, talking about film room, talking about respect and command in the locker room, all of these little things uh, uh, added to the non-distraction that Brian Hoyer is, I think it's clear that Johnny Manziel did not get this job because they think he has a bit of growing up to do. It wasn't just about who flung the football better. If, if, if Johnny Manziel um, doesn't have these distractions, if he is perceived as being the consummate, ultimate professional from open and tap, I don't think this happens. Mm. Uh, I think it happened because of things off the field as well as on the field, the kind of contagious effect that the quarterback can have on a locker room. And I think those things factored into the decision now, by Mike Patton and the Browns more so than the record, else. by all accounts, Johnny has been first in and last to yeah. leave day after practice, day after right. practice, day. Right. That he's been nothing but the model student in the classroom, right. Right. that he has grasped the offense much quicker than the staff thought he could grasp the offense. Mm -hmm. So if it's professionalism we're talking about, are, are we going to factor in the trip to Vegas? Is that what we're doing? I'm or? saying to you, this is the NFL. I'm not saying it's right. Um, I'm telling you that what I'm prognosticating about, what I'm speculating about, it's, it's entirely uh, consistent with the image that the NFL has created of itself. Every little thing is magnified. Okay, so Things is that the we don't little believe. thing with the middle finger That's magnified? Right. Do you, finger, you think absolutely. that was the, the straw that broke the yeah. back here? I, I think it's possible. I, I, certainly that sounds silly on its face, and I understand and recognize because that. Because you thought that the world was overreacting. overreacting. And I still yesterday. believe that. Okay. But it doesn't negate the fact that this is the NFL we're talking about here, and they believe that every little thing you do, particularly as a quarterback, has a profound and lasting effect mm -hmm. on a locker room. And they guard against that, especially when you consider that this is their third head coach in the last three years. Okay. Now, back to the question. Mm -hmm. I obviously, as I dug in and said yesterday, I believe this decision was wrong. But I am not surprised by it. It obviously took 24 extra hours yeah. to arrive at this decision <laughs> because and this is a predictable conclusion that they arrived at, but it, it was because Brian Hoyer threw them a curveball, sometimes literally a curveball, on Monday Night Football as he crumbled under the head-to-head -head national stage competition with Johnny Football. Right. I think that's exactly what happened. Mm -hmm. But from the start, the staff wanted Brian Hoyer to have this job. He's a local boy made good. And 
And again, I'm, I'm going to point this out again and again because it's it's just fair to Johnny Manziel to point out that three primary decision makers on draft night did not want to draft Johnny at all. The GM, the coach, head coach, new head coach, and the coordinator. So d does this surprise anybody? No. D do I think that they want Brian Hoyer to do what he did last year and pick up where he left off when he tore his ACL in his third start? Right. Mm -hmm. Yes, and I think they think he will because he, I, again, being totally objective, Brian Hoyer was really good last year in those two games. Remember, at Minnesota, he throws for 321, although 10 of those balls for 146 yards went to one Josh Gordon. 10 for 146. Sure. sure. That's quite a game by that young receiver, right? And then uh, Brian threw for 269 <clears throat> in a home win, 17-6 to six <clears throat> over Cincinnati. Yep. It's pr pretty impressive. Right. But the defense is a top-10 defense, and it will continue to get a little better under a very good defensive coach, That's right. another Rex Ryan protege in Mike Patton. Right. So to me, if I step back here, do I think that they want Brian Hoyer to keep this job all season long? I do. I do. That's what I believe. Willie? I, I don't know. God bless him because he might still crumble under the pressure exactly. of having Johnny Football looking over his shoulder pads game after game after game. It's almost going to be like Brian Hoyer can't even have an average game. Or there's going to be an outcry for Johnny Football. Now, I believe this staff wanted to show the world they would not crumble under the fan pressure to start Johnny, the Cleveland Brown fan pressure, Cleveland, yeah. you know, Brown's nation. But I'm going to say it one more time. Brian Hoyer is not Johnny Manziel. And I believe this team, if they started Johnny from the start at Pittsburgh, I believe this team would go 9-7. and seven. I believe if Brian Hoyer starts every game, they'll go 6-10. and 10. Obviously, Johnny will make more mistakes than Brian Hoyer will make. Johnny will also make m way more game-winning plays than Brian Hoyer can even consider making because he's just not capable of making those kinds of plays. So... Big picture, I, I disagree. I get it. I'm not surprised by it. I'm not going to fight against it. it. It's all well and good for them. They took the safe, conservative, conventional way out, the NFL way out. Sure. And yet, I think they're hoping against hope that Brian Hoyer will hang on to a job mm -hmm. I don't think he'll be able to hang on to. Well, let's be clear. There's no reason to trip. This is going to mark their 12th starting quarterback in the last 14 years in Cleveland. 12 different quarterbacks you, to you, start you, the season okay. in the last 14 so, years. So you mean no reason yeah. to figuratively trip, I, right? Yeah, not they, not they, literally I, trip. I'm, 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 they all trip, they, 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 well, right? That's what I'm saying. I mean, like, I mean, like yeah, trip to fell. Figuratively right. speaking, yeah. I say that simply because of this. Just because you start the season with Brian Hoyer doesn't mean you're going to finish it with him. Think about this. 1999 is Todd Detmer. Next two seasons is Tim Couch. We know. After that is Kelly Holcomb, right. then Jeff Garcia, Trent Dilfer, Charlie Fry, Derek Anderson, Brady Quinn, Jake DeLome, Colt, Colt McCoy, Brandon Weed in the last two years, and now you've got Brian Hoyer. But, this but you also have are. a whole new regime. I understand yeah. that, but, but, but again, you've had how many coaches? You've had three coaches in the last three years. You've had no consistency over over the last seven years. That's why you haven't won but so many games since okay, two, haven't won so? over five games since 2007. All I'm saying to you is that in the end, when you look at the Cleveland Browns, how they start, it, they're always trying to find their bearings. Mm -hmm. They're always trying to get their feet up <clears throat> under them to start the season. They never go in, it appears anyway, they never go into the season with a definitive plan on the offensive side of the ball. And knowing this, they hired a defensive minded coach. Now, yeah. their defense defense is going to be legit. We know that. Their yeah. front seven is no joke. That's You've got the corner. Hayden is no joke. You drafted Gilbert. Mm -hmm. You picked up a couple of other dudes. We'll see what they do. But everybody anticipates their defense to be top notch. Anytime you've talked about Cleveland and what they're going to do offensively, what you said is, quote, you need a running game, whether it's Tate or West, because you have to be have a running game to rely upon okay. because nobody was expecting but so much from the quarterback position anyway, particularly once, jo once the news came down about Josh Gordon that he was going to be gone. Yeah. So throwing the football wasn't going to be plan number yeah. one. You wanted ball control. You wanted to run the football. You wanted to move the chains, give your defense some rest so they could come out on the field fresh and wreak havoc that that way that's their ingredient which basically means we're really looking for a game manager at the quarterback for the position for now yeah. okay. and that's where Hoyer that's fits where in how long is for now 
Three or four games? That's all? After the bye, Johnny starts. You, Make are you sure? Is this no, no, you're I'm on not, the record? I'm, yes. I'm not sure, but I'm on let's, the record. let's be clear. Yeah. You've got Pittsburgh, you've got Baltimore in two of the first three weeks. It's not going to take long. Somebody's going to suffer. Hi, Skip Bayless. Johnny, after the bye, you ready? Hey, Pittsburgh might have suffered in the first game. Oh, gosh. Hey, you, you don't think that longtime defensive oh, coordinator is resting a little easier? <laughs> oh, okay. Your Steelers? Oh, what, what, what has Dick LeBeau oh, said from please. the start of training camp? I'm so preparing what? for Johnny so Manziel. Johnny said he wasn't ready, Skip. Yeah. Oh, Who what? said? Johnny Manziel said he wasn't said, ready. Said he wasn't ready? Yeah. I don't think he's saying that. I think he's saying from week to week, if you give him more snaps, he'd be ready. Oh, okay. Yeah. Oh, he wasn't ready last week for him, but he will be now. Okay. Would be. So uh, our, our, our social guru, Marcus Matthews, went to the Twitter and wrote uh, 